Hey guys, Kev here, and I wanted to uh, talk about the Tyconic Knives Tycon 1. And this knife is absolutely fantastic. I uh, really love it. I wanted to do a disassembly and see if I could put uh, skips in here as well. Um, this is uh, from the brand Tyconic, which is run by both Jeff from Tough Knives and Rob from RS Knife Works or RSK with support from uh, you who uh, is part of Vosti. And um, it certainly looks like the uh, Vosti shop is the one who uh, made this puppy. It has the top liner lock, which I believe uh, Vosti attributes some um, influence from Kevin Smock on with the uh, Spyderco Smock with the lock in that. So uh, there's that. But um, it's a sick knife. I love the size. You can really see the influence of both Rob and Jeff here. You kind of have a PSYOP from Vosteed mixed with a RS Chaos from Vosteed. Um, and then it's in a really good size for me. I personally like this smaller size of a knife. For example, what do I have that would work with that? Probably a... Uh, Mini Sweeney from Berg Blades is just about the same exact size. So hopefully that helps you. Um, we are looking at a 2 point, let's just say 2.8, something like that, inch blade. Um, and then the handle is... 3.75, something like that. So overall, I mean, it's not a huge knife, right? There's six inches right there. That's what she said. So I don't know, 6.75, 6.8 inches, something like that. Really nice. I like a smaller size knife like that. Um, I know many of you are probably going to want a large one, and I already told them they should just start ordering those already, but we'll see what happens. Um, the website at the time that I got this knife was not up and running, so it's just um, difficult to give you that, but I'm hoping to have an affiliate link or something I can put in the description of this video, so please check the description, check the comment section, I usually post it there as well, and if you use my link, it does help the channel, it's possible it won't be a link for me, but it doesn't matter, it's going to be down there for you guys either way, this is the website, um, I got early access, or now it's up, I'm not sure. Uh, but they have the Tycon 1 up. There's uh, four versions. There's one with no milling. And the uh, bead blasted handle, and then the uh, stonewash blade. There's this one with the uh, milling pattern, the radial sort of milling pattern, and stonewash blade. They're all 249. Um... You have a uh, PVD, I believe it's PVD, not DLC. Black stone wash, titanium black. They don't say, so usually that means it's just PVD. Um, without milling, and then black wash blade, and then you have a PVD with uh, the milling and black wash blade and the blue accent. I think it looks sick in all the versions. Um, so you really can't go wrong. 250 bucks, I think is a great price. It's M390 steel and titanium, and it's got the top liner lock in there. Uh, so, you know, I think the value is there. And uh, yeah, the clip is excellent, by the way. It has this uh, hole in it, which I think alleviates, I guess, some tension. And when you look at this, you probably think, ooh, I don't know if I want the one with milling because that lands right on the milling, right? Well, I'll tell you, it. I have no issue putting it in my pocket um, and taking it out. I haven't had any issue. It's in and out smooth. Now, I don't have super thick pants. I don't know if that would change anything, but um, it seems to be perfectly fine. So they must have tested it and just, you know, it was fine. Um, but if you want to be safe, you could get the one without milling, I guess. Um, but again, I've had no issue. I love this clip. It's excellent. The only thing that uh, I, I'm a little nitpicky on on this is the, you can see that little milling line there behind the clip. 
I wish they would have um, lost that. And I wish they would have put a pad under here. But again, not a big deal. And it's $250. It's not like they're asking $400 for this knife. Um, I've used this blade quite a bit. And I've enjoyed pretty much every second of it. Um, I don't think it's hollow ground, but it's definitely thinner up here than back here. It's got that sort of RS Chaos Rob um, from RSK style with the sort of, it's a compound grind. It's just kind of backwards a little bit. Uh, and I think that's cool. And you have a finger choil, again, not huge. So depending on your hands, but if I just put my finger in like this, I have no problem. The edge doesn't try to cut me or anything. Super comfortable. Jumping's good, locked in. Um, it's not a thick knife. Um, it's not a super thin knife. It's right around half an inch, maybe just under half an inch, which for me is good. That's kind of my um, cutoff for where I start to go, eh, I wish it was thinner. Um, but it's under that, so perfectly fine for me. Again, really comfortable in the hand. So I'm impressed with it. I really like the knife and for their first offering, from Tyconic, I think it's excellent, guys. They really knocked it out of the park. Um, definitely one of my favorite knives I've handled this year, I would say. Um, it's been a little bit of a slow year, I feel like, um, for those like real banger knives, you know? Really love the Mini Sweeney, that's one of my favorites. Um, and this would be right up there, um, really love it. So let's take it apart and uh, adventure inside. I'm not sure if I'm going to post a separate like review video, so that's why I don't want to go too crazy with thoughts. Um, but I wanted to give you some in case I don't, you know? It's kind of one of those tricky situations. Um, I'll shut up. All right, so here's the uh, Devo Knife screwdriver prototype, and uh, let's get into it. T8 on the pivot. I did put a little bit of glue on this just because it was walking when I got it. Um, actually, cool story, I um, picked this up from Jeff's house, Tough Knives, he lives near me, he's about 10 minutes away, which is awesome, and I've been over there a couple times now, it, uh, it's always fun to chat with another knife nerd, especially one who makes knives, it's very cool. I have yet to meet Rob from RSK, so I do hope to do that in the future, because I think he's sort of in the area as well, and again, just always a good time talking to knife nerds and knife makers, so um, I think that would be cool as well. But um, from all accounts, everything I've heard from Jeff, he's a great dude, so um, I'm rooting for both of them on this project. Here is the inside, you have a liner with the um, uh, compression style lock here, top liner lock, and then you have the button attached to that. So that liner would come out and then you'd have a screw here that's holding that button on. That button is titanium, I believe. Yeah, it's anodized, the same color as the scales, which is cool. You can do it a couple different ways. The way they did it on the RS Chaos was, this was actually a cut out piece of steel. I believe it was steel. And it was mounted to the back spacer. And I just thought that was the coolest thing, the way they did that. Um, now you have to have, I guess, a large enough backspacer for it and whatever, but I just thought that was a cool way to do it because then you can remove liners and it reduces some weight. Um, they obviously have pockets here, the milling here, another pocket here. So, you know, they're reducing weight where they can. This knife has never felt heavy to me, but, um, you know, anyway, here's the bearings. They look like Little guys, I think they're gonna be, are these one millimeters? They're probably 364th size, but they look small to me, probably just cause I, yeah. Okay, so they're 364th bearings, and I'm guessing it's gonna be a five millimeter like most things. There's your five millimeter. Oh, look at that, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, 3 sixteenths doesn't fit which it wouldn't, but the next one would be four millimeter and that's way too small. So um, if you guys aren't aware, you can pick up the uh, Skiff Workshop test fit card at skiffworkshop.com. You can use my code LEFTYEDC, that'll get you 10% off at Skiff Workshop. I'll put a link down below in the description, but these are amazing if you're into ba uh, swapping bearings. Super uh, handy. They also make these finger bits 
so you can um, get um, pesky spinning barrel situations because you can just grip the knife with your hand while you're locking in the finger bit. It's hard to do because this isn't a whole knife. Um, oop, don't want to show you that one. All right, so here's one, right? This is our fireball, uh, sorry, tall boy. So if you take the finger bit, you can get it into the slot there, and then, then you can pinch the knife with that hand, which locks it in place, and then you can use your other hand to unscrew whatever it is. This isn't actually a barrel, I'm just trying to show you. And that stops you from having to do this, where you have two drivers and you're pushing against it, you're not holding it, and then you, and you stab yourself with the driver, or worse yet, you scratch the shit out of your knife. So that's why this exists. I love it. Check it out at Skiff Workshop. All right, moving on. These bearings are pretty dirty, so I'm gonna clean everything. We don't need them. I hope I have one more set of five mil, 364th. I should somewhere. I do need to order more. I keep forgetting, I keep putting it off. I do not in there, but Luckily, I have a whole nother set here. Oh, nope, one millimeter, one sixteen. Uh-oh, seriously? There's no way I don't have them. There's no freaking way. There's no way, Kev, you did this video and you don't have them. 316, 364th, five millimeter, one millimeter, four millimeter. Man, come on, this is the size I buy the most these days. Wait, what's this one? No, no. Ah, five millimeter, 364th. Do I have any more? Yep, I have one more. And then do I have a bunch of five mil? Wow. Don't have many five mil, 116. All right, I do need to order finally. So let me put these here, put that there. Put all those in there and the one extra one of those. Okay. Yeah. Time to reorder. Because I am getting low. It's been a while since I didn't have something I needed, so don't want to be that guy, you know? Alright. Shut this. All right, let's clean everything up. I need a cloth. Got my handy dandy Devo cloth here. Just load it up with alcohol and pop the pivot out, clean everything. You know, pretty basic stuff here. I'm not gonna deconstruct the whole knife because it's just gonna be a pain, take the clip off and everything, but essentially you have the backspacer here. And there's like a hair in here from me probably. And then you have uh, a liner that's in here right now, held in by these screws and these barrels, so I'm not gonna take those out. But you get it, there's a liner. Um, assuming steel, yep, inside the uh, titanium milled frame. So it adds a little bit of weight, but they need that liner to, um, to have the lock work properly. So um, this is proper, right? Wouldn't go in this way. It lined up perfectly, so I don't know why I'm questioning it. Oh, shit. No, okay. All right, stop pin. Nice, snug fit. Now, what I like to do is make sure I clean the lock face. So that is, on this knife, not up here like normal. It's right there. So you just want to get any schmutz off of there and the detent ball i guess while we're there yeah there's like something on there i don't know if that's just yeah i think it's just a it's like a glare thing it's fine all right clean everything else and we're good on that and then i will clean the blade which is always gonna have shit on it, no matter what you do. Especially from factory, they always put a nice amount of lube on it for you, usually. 
clean the bearing pockets, right? Um, and there should be everything up here. Oh, where's the tang on this one? It was this side I was cleaning up there. So used to normal frame lock, liner locks. And then I'm gonna clean the detent hole with one of these guys. And it looks like it was clean. You can see that uh, M390 marking. And what is that? Is that rust? I don't know if that's just like shit or where, oh where. Let me just grab this rust eraser. Now it could just be like schmutz and it's just from machining from the factory or something. And this takes it off. It's not really coming off, so I don't think it's rust, which is all, that's all I really care about, as long as it's not rust. It's not like it's showing, which I don't think it does, whatever that is. It's mostly gone. It looks more like a dark gray black than rust, which is usually, you know, not dark gray. Um, okay, so just got to figure out which way this goes in, actually. So it has a D shape, but it goes along the entire thing. So I would venture to guess this goes through the show side and then it goes into the D shape on this side, which is sort of sideways. Oh, where is the D shape? Oh, there, it was there. <laughs> that was all luck apparently, okay. Sometimes it's different. Sometimes the D shape locks in on the other side and sometimes the D shape is just immediate on the show side. So this is one where it's on the show side, which makes it easier to assemble in my opinion. All right. Oh, I need to clean the pivot. So what I'll do here is take the uh, cloth and I'll lay it over the pivot where the alcohol is on the cloth. And then I'll drive my T8 in there and just kind of spin it around. And this is, I'm doing this because I want to be able to Loctite it or glue it without um, oil in there or whatever. So I always make sure I clean the pivot screw and the barrel. They seem pretty clean. And different factories do it different ways. Some of them do the Loctite for you, which can be annoying if they use too much. And some of them let you do that part. Seems like they're letting us decide if we want to thread lock it, which is cool with me. So let's get these out. So the major benefit to these bearings is going to be the amount of balls. So she said there's 15 on each bearing. And this is the size you want. I'll put a. I'll put it in the description, but that's the size. Again, use Lefty EDC to get ten percent off at Skiff. Fifteen balls versus nine. I think it's usually nine on these. Yeah, nine or ten doesn't matter. You're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's nine. So you have eighteen balls total versus thirty. So it's twenty. Sorry. It's 12 extra ball bearings that you get in your knife by putting these skiffs in. That's a big difference. So whenever a knife has the five millimeter, 364th bearing size, I usually recommend you swap it because it's a big difference. And it really does attribute to nice smoothness, keeps it really con uh, consistent because you have a lot more contact there. Anyway, shutting up. I am going to put a little bit of KPL heavy on the uh, detent ball area. I got to figure this out because it looks like it runs. Does it run? Look at that. Right along the. That's crazy. Just need a little bit. Come on, baby. There. It always ends up being too much, but that's. Oh, Jesus. 
Um, that seems like a, enough right there to me. All right, so we did that. Then we're gonna use the KPL original and put that on the bearings. I'll just drop one on here. Get this one going. And then I will put the blade on. Probably could have cleaned the blade before I put it back together, but I'll do it after. Put that one there. There's no washers to flip over. It's one downside to liners, but it is what it is. Not a big deal. So then we're gonna put this together. I'm just gonna put this on top. Now it's not gonna let me push it down because, well it will, but that button is, the button is on the other side. So I gotta just realize that and maybe pinch it instead of pushing down on the uh, ground. So I'm just gonna do this and then take our pivot and grab my, Driver. Come on now, drop in. I'm not trying to like tighten it or anything. I'm just trying to get it mostly in there. There we go. So it's not hitting the sides or anything. Then I want to get my body screws. Get those suckers in there. Okay, got those. Check the other side just to make sure they're tight. They feel pretty tight. Check the clip while I'm here. Okay, everything feels good. So now it just comes down to the pivot, which looks pretty, uh, centered there so here's the blade centered good to go let us check no lash fires out no play no rock action feels good getting a little bit of a click on the button but uh, if I recall, that's how it was when I got the knife and it just took a bit to wear, it, wear in. And it's probably just because I cleaned it thoroughly. Just needs to get a little bit of something on it, maybe. Could be the compression lock is different than a frame lock where you don't want oil. Uh, detent feels... The same which is good. That's how I like them. I like them the same. So just looking at the tang here, I'm not seeing oil or anything, but let's just grab this guy and make sure there's no, could be KPL somehow transferred over that could contribute to the lock stick or it could just be breaking. So yeah, everything feels good. So I'm just gonna test the uh, pivot. So this is the way I do it. I'm gonna clean it one more time. I'm gonna put this guy over top. And I'm actually going to get out a T6. And that T8 didn't go as deep as I wanted into the pivot when I did it earlier. Just glue those back together. It's the one thing I love about this driver. You can do that. And yeah, we got some schmutz out of there. Nice. So now we're just going to test it again. Make sure everything, oops, poke our knife with the driver like an idiot. 
test everything, make sure it lines up. Centered, no play, no rock. The action is unbelievable anyway. Let me just see if, if I go a little tighter, what happens? Nothing really. Got a little bit harder to close, but I mean, it's still very good. So I'm gonna try not to go too tight, but doesn't seem like I need to finesse it like crazy. That's one thing I just try to make sure. Because I'm gonna use super glue. I have a video explaining why I use super glue. If you're wondering what the hell is he doing? It's just easier for me. I don't have to um, wait three days and redo it five times like I usually do with uh, Loctite. No play, no rock. Excellent action. Let's tighten it a little bit. Still excellent action. No play, no rock. Great action, dead nut centered. No lash, nothing. Perfection. What a great knife. That's one thing I love about Vastid, guys. Their shit just goes together and comes comes apart and goes together like, like butter. I don't know why butter doesn't go together and come apart well, but you get what I'm saying. Um, they make it easy. You know, some of these companies or OEMs, I feel like you end up... Um, you end up not wanting to take them apart because you always struggle getting them back together because they're forcing these knives together um, just to get them on the shelves, you know? But if anybody takes them apart, it's like useless. So, um, yeah, look how clean this is. Just a beautiful knife. I just, as soon as I saw it, as soon as Jeff showed it to me, I, I was like, damn. Yes, I love it. Um, I mean, it's like dead nut centered, just perfect. Nice thin tip. Look at that. Almost uses the entire handle, but it left enough to not make it uncomfortable there. The milling on this is gorgeous. The clip, I love this clip. That's probably my favorite thing about the knife is the clip. I like a lot of things, but that clip is just gorgeous. Papa blue is really nice. Obviously, I love the compression style lock. One thing I love about it is that I'm left-handed and it doesn't get in my way. Fire it, right? It didn't block me from firing the knife. It didn't loosen the detent. I'll show you. On um, button lock knives, i to find one. Oh, I know a good one here. So this is the new Artisan um, Wizard from, I think it's from, what's his name? Nick Swan, I believe. Uh, and this is a cool knife, really cool knife. That'll be another video. But um, it's, a, it's a button lock and a traditional kind with a plunge, right? Plunge lock. So what happens when I go to reverse like this is my finger goes right where the button is. And when I go to flick it, it just like barely punches out the detent. You know, obviously I can, I can like really flick it and make it, uh, you know, but because my finger touches the button, it sort of puts a little pressure on it and it basically loosens the detent out, right? Because if you push the button, it flips out like that. And it's all working on a spring where this is similar in a sense, right? But it's not working on a spring and the way they tuck away the button, look at that. It's actually underneath that cutout. So if you put your finger here, you're not gonna push it. And they do that on purpose because if you push this, the same thing happens, it'll fall out. But it's a little bit harder because you have an actual detent retaining it first off, right? See how that just kind of, 
takes a little bit to get out. This is all retained by a spring, so you have movement. So left-handed, even if I'm on that spot, which I think with this great design, I'm not even on that, I'm not even near that button. But even if I were, I wouldn't be putting pressure on it. Like I can put my finger right over the top of it, right-handed, reverse flick it, no problem. So that's a huge thing for me as a lefty. I can reverse flick this amazingly well, where usually button lock style knives, I cannot. It's usually difficult. So um, just wanted to point that out. Yeah, gorgeous knife. So hopefully you're excited for these. If you are, uh, again, link should be down below. And uh, it gets a seal of approval from me, that's for sure. Um, love it. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. I will uh, happily answer those for you. Hopefully uh, Jeff and Rob will be checking the comments as well to answer those. Um, but yeah, love it. Tyconic, Tycon 1. Coming very soon. Love you guys. Peace.